versus yeah. one. Yeah. It's really, my chicken's really funky. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, good. So it's not just that. Can these mics work? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
of a two-in-one question. Okay. Are you going to review the movie Venom, and if so, is it clips or clipless? We are going to review Venom. I'm still up in the air whether or not I want to do clipless or clip, because we have, there's one big clipless one, there's two big ones we have uh, coming up. One I can just give away because you can get, it's going to be the second game movie. You know, mm -hmm. so, so that's going to be one around when it comes out. Yeah. Uh, the other one is kind of the musical review, so we're like already getting started on that. Oh. Uh, so we, we know we're going to do Venom this year, we don't know whether or not we want to do it in Clipless or not, where we're still kind of trying to feel it out in terms of like, like somebody's trying, for what we want to do, we kind of want to do a little bit of a tie-in, like into the Spider-Verse, like all these different Venoms come along, it's like, you know, okay, let me tell you the story, it's like, here's the Venom from the comic, here's the Venom from uh, Spider-Man 3, here's the Venom from the cartoon, and they're all coming together to say why this Venom doesn't work. <laughs> uh, so it's like, we really want to do that, and it's like, we can do that clip list, but we're also going to have this other, these two other really big clip list movies coming up, so mm. we don't know yet, but probably within the next month, we'll be working on Okay. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Cool. All okay, right. Yeah. Um, how do you guys decide what movies you want to do and how far in advance do you guys have to plan them out? It's very good for uh, both of us. Mm -hmm. um, for, I, I just have like a list of like, here's good how we want, here's good ones for kind of like what I call editorial reviews, where it's mostly just the end of the as many, uh, not as big a production to it. And then ones where it's like, okay, here's one I want to do with the whole cast to really explore it more. Um, and it just kind of varies. I'm like, okay, did, am I in the mood to do this one now? Do I think this one would get hits? Or do I want to do something to mix it up a bit? Like I did one on Man on the Moon, and I know that's not going to get a lot of hits. You know, but it's something I'm like, all right, well, we've had some reviews that did really well. Let me try something a little different with this. Uh, so it just kind of varies, you just kind of get a feel for it about like when it seems like a good time to do something, what does it. Like once a year we'll do a commercial special, once a year we'll do like um, one on like a block of television that comes out like Tsunami or Fox Kids and stuff like that. Uh, you know, we'll have the Halloween episodes, the Christmas episodes, so uh, it, it just kind of feel into that. Yeah, pretty much. Like when it's not something that's specific to a tie-in with a movie coming out or a holiday, uh, I also have like a list of stuff, and I don't plan it. I mean, there's stuff that's on that list that's been there for a long time. Because <laughs> I don't plan it too far in advance. Because if I do that, by the time I would maybe get to something way later, my drive to want to do it might be softened a little bit. So to kind of keep it fresher to plan like maybe a couple weeks out gives a bit more drive to want to do an episode on that particular movie. Also, a lot of times, it'll depend on just how well the previous episode did. So if it's an episode where it's like, oh, well, that one really underperformed, maybe I should do something here that's like a religious movie episode. So those, those tend to do well. But anymore, it's honestly kind of a crapshoot because it can, I did one recently on the 70s movie called The Zodiac Killer, where I thought like, I love that. It's, it's probably my favorite episode so far this year. And that one, I was like, this is, I, I was like, I, I don't see this doing like gangbusters or anything, like this this for me, this is gonna be a risk, bless you. <laughs> uh, I'm like, this, this, this will be like, just for me, it'll be really, really fun to do and, and really cool. And it did better than I thought I did, and then the one that I thought was gonna be like the same episode, the episode on the 70s Shaft movie, the original Shaft from 71, um, to tie in for the new movie, I did that episode, and it bombed hard. <laughs> Maybe it's totally appropriate. It's a, it's a 
tying it in a way that I didn't see coming. <laughs> <laughs> so it, honestly, kind of any more, you, you never really know. But yeah, it's I, I try to keep it relatively spontaneous as far as the new episodes. Uh, cool. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, the mic blew up. <laughs> uh, other questions? Yes, me. <laughs> Uh, do you think you might have any uh, special guests like you had Dante Bosco and Don Bluth? Do you guys have any idea what are you going to have for your next video sports? Uh, we, we have, there's a couple that we've had before in little cameos, but, but they're, like, they're going to come back kind of in bigger roles. Uh, I like one of the clipless ones I was talking about, and we're going to have somebody that has like, a bigger part in it. Um, and sometimes there's people we just meet at conventions, and it's like, oh, we might want to have them out, like, we got along with them, they're pretty cool and stuff like that. Like, I, I don't want to give them away yet just in case, like we do, you know, have them out or don't have them out, whatever, but, uh, uh, yeah, like, there's, at the top of my head, there's no, like, major ones where it's like, you haven't seen this person yet, get ready, uh, but, but there's a couple where like, yeah, maybe we should talk to that person, maybe we should, uh, uh, do something with that, maybe you got somebody in your movie. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, we got to the sequel to the, uh, Snob movie coming out in July, and, Lloyd Kaufman, uh, of Trauma, president of Troma, director of uh, one of my favorite movies, The Toxic Avenger, director of all these great Troma films. He plays my dad in the movie. <laughs> and that was a dream, man. It was. And it was surreal, too. Like, we're doing the scene, and I'm like, man, this is so cool. I think I'm see the Lloyd Kaufman. He's playing my dad. <laughs> like, that's awesome. <laughs> It was great. It was an absolute pleasure. And what's cool is that, because he shot that at our, our studio, and you know, we were just taking a break, and we're all just having pizza and stuff, and we're just talking. He's just kind of in the corner quiet. And if you've seen him in, like, James Rolls videos and stuff, you know, like, he can be a kooky guy. So he's got just in the corner, kind of quiet, right? Like, okay, like, hope he's having a good time or whatever. And then he sort of, when we were uh, wrapping up talking, he kind of just said, you know, that was just such Die hard movie nerd talk. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I just enjoyed listening to him because it reminded me so much of what we were doing. And we would just talk a movie and we just loved it. And I loved him. Sorry, I don't know, right? Mom, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Stories too. like in between takes, we were all hanging out. Mom, he was telling the story. I didn't hear you. Working sorry. On, working on the final countdown, his Kirk Douglas movie. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was just. Just a pleasure talking to him throughout that, that whole day of, of filming. And I think the funny thing too, I, I could be wrong, I thought when he was looking at our studio, even he was like, our studio is not this big! <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, yeah, he said that. <laughs> uh, other questions? Yeah! I have a question for Tamara. Are you running out of things that you haven't seen? <laughs> oh, well, so that's a good question. <laughs> so, um... No. <laughs> That's short no. answer. I'm, so I'm running out of like bigger ones to do. Like, well, know. it can't just be anything. I mean, you've got to have something to say. You can't just be like, yeah, that sucked. Right. So, right. I mean, that's not much of a, yeah, I feel like yeah. a lot of them, like I watched recently, I sat down to watch um, Spinal Tap. Uh -huh. And I was like, yeah, no, it's so funny, but I don't think that really there's much like, to talk about because it's just no. joke and joke and joke and joke and um, pretty deadpan. So right. I just, was able to sit down and enjoy it. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> and not like write notes on it right. and <laughs> decide what to talk about with it. But but yeah, I guess I'm running out of um, the bigger ones for sure. And there's forever going to be ones that, like every time we film in the studio, they're like, oh, have you seen this? I'm like, Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> so they're turning you into them. Yeah. <laughs> one of us, one of us. <laughs> That's the way with the Caligula episode. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> What's so fun with we'll find one like you haven't seen? They were like, yeah, have you seen Ghost? And she's like, no. I'm like, oh, you gotta see Ghost. She's like, really? That always sounds like a, a romance. You're like, yeah, technically. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, it's really, it's actually kind of a messed up movie when yeah. you think about it. And she puts it on and she's like, oh my god, that wasn't what I thought. And I was like, yeah, the guy directed Naked Gun. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's wild that, that I've gone this far and these movies haven't been spoiled for me. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> Uh, how'd you come up with the soundtrack? Uh, 
pretty much so I I always wanted to do I always liked criticism. I always liked comedy and like Looney Tunes cartoons and stuff like that. I like comedians like Louis Black and Bill Murray and stuff. So I was like, okay, I wish there was something I could do that could just like kind of combine all of that into one. And uh, I started doing these five second movies uh, on my YouTube channel. It was just always a video, if you haven't seen this, uh, it's me quitting my job like a long, long time ago. I remember and, that. And that's, it's almost like I have two things I'm known for, one's this doctor critic and all this. The other is me quitting this job in this video just that always bit. pops up at least a couple times a year on a news program or something like that. It, uh, it's me, I, you know, I was a janitor at a car factory and I have a, a stereo that plays uh, the 2001 theme. And I walk in and it's perfectly to the music. I set it down, I step on top of a chair, I open up my shirt and said, I quit. <laughs> and then it goes into Bohemian Rhapsody, the part I say, So you think you can stop me? It's been my eye. And I literally dance around the place singing <laughs> to it. Uh, so that got me some attention. Uh, and I started doing these five second movies where it's like editing uh, a famous movie down to five seconds. Like, I'll say, Titanic in five seconds. The ship can't sink, it sinks. The end. You know? And those did really well. So I'm like, Ariel, let me see if like I can be funny on camera, you know, like a performer. You know, a writer and all that stuff. So I started Nostalgia Critic because I saw, like, I, I didn't know if there was, like, a crowd for it, but then I saw, like, the two where I saw if there was really a crowd for it. One was, I don't even remember the name of this site, but it was just talking about all this old nostalgic stuff. He wrote articles, kind of making fun of, you know, these things we grew up with. And then I saw James Rolfe doing The Nerd. And, and the other side, I didn't know, like, he updated it, so I'm assuming he's doing well. But then, uh, uh, James Rolfe was doing great as the nerd, and I'm like, all right, there's an audience for this, so let me try this, so let me see if uh, uh, this can go somewhere. And it, yeah, from there I just kind of kept doing it, and a uh, great guy came along, so I'm starting a uh, site called Channel Awesome. I can make it where you can make money at it, you can make a living. And I was like, this is when nobody was. I don't even know what James was yet. Uh, and I was like, you can't do that, you can't do that. He's like, give me a job, I'll tell you how it works. And, get a plan uh, going here and uh, yeah I mean we've gone from like player to player you know and then back to YouTube here but I mean it's one of those things where it's like yeah I mean 12 years I've been doing this wow. and, uh, and it's still going great I'm still able to make a living at it. we have a great studio we got great friends and stuff like that so I think it's a dream come true man. It's, it's really fun. <laughs> uh, so cool, cool. Uh, other questions here Yes. Is that, reason, yeah. <laughs> is that the reason why you create your own character, the homeless bum? Oh, no, okay, so Chester A. Bum was just, when I reviewed the Cloverfield movie, I was doing like, the movie is pretty much this, and it's just me shaking the camera and saying, oh my god, we're all gonna die! And like, and I love that voice so much, I'm like, I want to do more of this voice. And I'm like, well, what's he saying? It sounds like a crazy guy in the street, you know, just <laughs> shouting stuff. Uh, so I was like, well, what aren't I doing yet? I'm like, well, I'm not doing like current movie reviews, so I guess I could do bum reviews. And he talks about current movies and stuff like that, and it just went from there. It's just this stupid voice. <laughs> um, and some of the shows just come across like just very for the moment, like uh, and my boss called up, and he's just like, yeah, ask a ninja's doing good. Do ask that guy. Like, <laughs> I don't know how I mean. So, well, let's ask that guy. Well, okay, I'll look very sophisticated. I'll get a robe and a mask out of the pipe. But everything I would say would sound right, because I look so sophisticated, but it'd be unbelievably wrong, whatever the questions are. And uh, the uh, and old story about ask that guy is that if you remember, Doug is there. And he's holding this big red book open. And he looks up, oh, hello there, and stuff like that. That was a music book of mine that I paid $25 for when I was in college. <laughs> and Doug said, can I use this? Yes, you can. Can I sell this on eBay? Yes, you can. <laughs> How much? It was like 600 something. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get any of it? No, I didn't. Oh, of course not. <laughs> Ryan will just come up to me and say, eating Tide Pods on videos is popular, do that. <laughs> I already did. <laughs> it's this cough that won't go away. <laughs> so, cool, cool. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Um, do you have any advice for anyone who 
who's been thinking about becoming a reviewer themselves, like a, a movie reviewer or a cartoon reviewer? Do you have any advice on I, I have the two you? words of advice if anyone wants to do something like this. I, if, there's a lot of things you can say, but I think there's two things that are the most important. One, don't. <laughs> <laughs> because it's super competitive, everybody wants to do it. When I got into it, there was not many people doing it. There's very, very few. So I was kind of in the right place, right time. You know, it still takes a lot of work and determination. So, but if you're like, dude, I want to do this, I want to try it, I want to go out there and do it, the, the, the second most important, even more important than don't, honestly, uh, it sounds like a no-brainer, but it's so important. Do it because you love it. Uh, and you're like, oh yeah, I love it, I love it. There's a lot of people that do it just to get famous. And the reason it's so important to do it because you love it is because it is very, very likely it will not turn into a full-time thing. Uh, you won't be able to pay the bills with it. Uh, maybe even real life will get in the way, you won't be able to do it anymore. You want to be able to look back and say, I'm glad I did that anyway. Like, I'm doing what I love, I'm talking about what I love to talk about, even if five people watch it, or 5,000, or 5 million, or whatever, I'm glad I'm doing this. So that if you don't get picked up, if nothing ever comes of it, you can still look back and you're happy you did it. You know, that, that's me. That's what I love to do. I'm happy doing this anyway. If you do get really famous and it takes off, and you pay the bills, and you just totally explode, you'll be all the more humble for it. Because you'll be like, I'm enjoying this anyway. Uh, and we've known a lot of people that do it for the fame. And they're, yeah, well, well, no, now until they get uh, burnt out, uh, they either don't get recognized and they're miserable, or it's sometimes even more common, they do get recognized and they're still miserable. Uh, you know, the fame, does, if anything, the fame makes them even more angry and more pissed off, you know. So it's one of those things where you want to be sure you're doing that for the right reason. Uh, because if you do it because you love it, you can't lose, you know. Even if you don't get, exa nobody gets exactly what they're looking for, you know. Uh, sometimes they get even more than looking for it, but not everybody, or less, but not everybody gets exactly that. Uh, so, yeah, if you're doing it for that reason, you'll win. Yeah, so, so that's honestly the best advice I can give. Thank you. Uh, actually, I was going to say, I mean, any yeah. advice you would give to? Yeah. Do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's fair. You said exactly what I, what I would say. Because uh, it, it's true, we hit, we hit a really good time, like 12, 13 years ago, whatever it was, and it hit. Uh, it, it, it's exactly what he said. Do it, do it because you love doing it. Do it, do it because you have passion and, and, and drive for it. And the, the show will be better because of it. And also, you'll be mentally better because of that it, it, as well. Cool, cool. Uh, other questions? Uh, let's go uh, black hoodie with Bunny. great buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that is. <laughs> uh, so I know you guys have lots of like old versus new, or musical reviews, or clipless reviews, lots of like sub-shows uh, within Nostalgia Critic. Is there like one subset that you really enjoy doing, or really dread doing, or that you find is challenging in ways that other ones aren't? Uh, I, I really like doing the commercials a lot. Uh, I, I like doing them because that in the first episode I did a commercial special where I'm like, oh, I watch commercials to relax. I really did do that. <laughs> I don't. I don't do it as much anymore, but I am subscribed to this channel. It's called like 80s Commercials Vault or something like that. And when a new one pops up, I'm like, woo! <laughs> uh, and it's so pathetic, but I don't care. Um, and, and when I did the video on that, again, people were like, let's just go ahead, do it again, do it again. Uh, so I love doing those, but I will admit we're debating whether or not to like make this next one our last one because we are kind of like, yeah, we're getting a little repetitive. We are kind of struggling. Uh, you know, to find like a new thing because it's always like take a commercial that's popular and make it dark that seems to be like what we always do so uh so next one might be our last one i don't know unless we make it like really really like man the second wind's coming in and we can do something great with it uh so we i don't know if we're going to keep that going or not but we'll definitely do at least one more uh one that i thought man this is going to be great i'm going to do a million of these and then by the time i was done i'm like now nah, we uh, was I did one where like I reviewed intros, which was cool and it was fun to do. But it was also like, man, this is surprisingly a lot of work uh, because you just have to show the same clip. Because intros are very short; they're only like thirty seconds or whatever. You just got to show the same clips over and over and slow it down or, or zoom in or just something to make it visually interesting. Uh, and, and that got a little tricky. So right oh, now I'm not thinking about doing more of those, but. Uh, 
Yeah, again, maybe I'll get the second win. We'll see what happens. Sorry, uh, I didn't hear about you. Uh, yeah, I, I still love doing the show, like I do. And part of that is like incorporating different types of movies into it that, you know, keeps burnout from happening. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it keeps the drive there, the passion there to keep doing this. Good. Incorporating things like the religious movies or old uh, episode on an old movie trailer. Also playing around with the <laughs> format as well. I did a choose your own adventure episode oh, recently. Oh, I love yeah. it. Oh my god. <laughs> that was that was a lot of fun to do. Because nobody's done it that way either. Yeah. It's just so bizarre. What a weird <laughs> subject matter. Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> I like the people who like the final episode show venue ending on the interview. Too. I know, yeah. Yeah, oh no, that was when I did that interview with Steve Gutenberg. So real quick aside, like I didn't know it was happening to like ten minutes before it happened. A friend of mine, Mike Phelan, set it all up. He runs up fanbolt.com and he uh, uh, reached out to Gutenberg's agent and then got back to me and was like, "Yeah, so the interview." And he said, "Yes, and it's also happening in ten minutes." Like, uh, <laughs> so at home, there's like a paper plate I have that I wrote notes on. And it's like, ask about the day after. <laughs> so. It, Playing around with the format like that is really fun. Also doing, uh, like I did an episode on 1941, the Spielberg movie, which I love. It's one of my favorite comedies. And I made it a, a very analytical review. Like it wasn't a linear review. It wasn't really a riff heavy episode. I got the same thing coming up on Monday with an episode on one of my favorite movies, The Hollywood Nights. So that I, I, I really look forward to. I, I still, every week, look forward to doing episodes because again, having different kinds of movies, different styles of videos and everything like that. It, it still keeps the passion there for the no, 12 good. years that, okay. that we've been doing this show. Have you ever thought about, I, I doubt they even know this way, but have you ever thought about doing Great Race, like an analytical Yeah, I have actually. Yeah, we both love that movie. Oh, yeah. And if you want to know where this house really came from, uh, watch The Great Race and just watch Jack London there. I steal <laughs> so much from him. <laughs> uh, it's a very Looney Tunes based comedy. <laughs> So cool, other questions? Yeah. Uh, the thing I've noticed is great about both of you guys is that even though you make fun of movies, like your love for film still shines through. And there's like a growing section of people who are trying to do what you do, but are just so relentlessly nitpicky that you just kind of want to go read a fucking book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you yeah. Keep that balance where you're just like, yeah, we're making fun of this movie, but you know, Maybe you don't like that movie, but you still love the art form. You know, a part of it, I, I mean, just loving it. I, again, do what you love. I love movies. I love talking about it. I love comedy. So I love uh, doing like a crossover. But yeah, recently, like the past, and when I say recently, I mean like the past four or five years or something like that, uh, it, I kind of got more analytical, and it's just more fun and interesting. Like, you know, I did one on Barney. Well, what can you say about the Barney? <laughs> but then I started I can say a lot. Yeah. You say a lot. <laughs> but, but then I was like, you know, man, yeah, I remember hating this purple beast when I was a kid. <laughs> and all my friends hated this thing, and all every grown-up I knew hated this thing. And the only people that liked him were, were these little kids. And, and then I was thinking, and I remember everyone did a parody of El Barney and hating Barney. Oh, I hate that purple slug, and you know, they just despised him. And then I was thinking, yeah, why? It, it was clearly meant for like little little kids, you know. Like people make fun of Dora, but nobody hates. Or, you know, uh, you know, or any of these other uh, shows that are out, and so I was like, you know, why did I hate this thing so much? So part of it, I just went this long thing about why everybody hated Barney the Dinosaur, like what the possible reasons could be, and that was really interesting because then I could go to here's how other shows that last, you know, people still watch and they remember, will never forget. Uh, you know, like uh, Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers and stuff, and it's like they had more than one emotion. And it was just one of those things where I'm like, this is kind of interesting to talk about, even though it's not always like, here's a joke, here's a joke, but because it's a character, you can be a bit more aggressive with it. Uh, you know, where somebody likes a movie that I hate, I don't care, go ahead, I yeah. love it, you know. <laughs> but the critic will be really angry, and it helps make the point even more when you have a character, or you have a song, or you have a routine, or you, you know, you have a cast that you can do a story as the characters in the movie showing why something doesn't work, you can really play with it. Uh, so. I don't even remember what the question was. So, oh, man. <laughs>